So welcome everyone to Startup Startup Presents Founder Stories, Tokyo. Uh, we're sitting here with Harrison Tang, CEO and founder of the company. And as any great tech story goes, uh, there's drama, there's a basement, right? There's pivoting, uh, lawsuits running out of money and then a recession on top of it all. Uh, so this should be a very interesting story and a journey to go through. Uh, thank you. For doing this. So without anything else, here is Harrison Tank. Um, can you tell us about Spokio, please? Yeah, definitely. Well, first of all, thank you, Jose. Uh, it sounds like uh, you definitely know what the entrepreneur journey <laughs> looks like. <laughs> because yeah. yeah, it does definitely have a lot of ups and downs. But uh, uh, today, as uh, a lot of you guys know, uh, Spokio is a leading people search engine, a people intelligence service that organize about 14 billion records into 600 million profiles to help uh, 15 million unique users a month to search and connect with others. You know, we have different use cases uh, such as uh, consumers, uh, finding long lost families and friends, or actually as a famous blogger once said, Spokio before you date. So dating research <laughs> is, is also another use case. On the B2B side, uh, obviously fraud prevention, uh, fraud mitigation, or law enforcement officers using us to catch criminals. You know, the, there are a lot, quite a bit of use cases, but ultimately, ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to help people make better informations about people in their lives, right? Helping make the world around us more transparent. Uh, so that's, uh, that's our mission and that's uh, why we're here. Gotcha. And it's been now, what, 14 years since you guys started this? So it's been, you know, some success and, and some struggles. Um, but it's sort of the beginning. First off, where does the idea come from? Like, how do you guys land on, okay, we're going to launch Spokio? Yeah, so actually, Spokio is my first and only job so far. So you can say it's the best job and the worst <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, uh, we started, uh, actually, the idea was a social network aggregator. Uh, so at that time, uh, Facebook actually wasn't the biggest uh, social network. Uh, the number one was MySpace and Friendster is number three. So uh, every other month, it feels like a new social network, uh, social network for pets, social network for athletes. Every sure. other month, it sounds like VC funded another social network. So the idea was to create this aggregator, right? That helps streamline people's digital lifestyle. And that idea really is just looking at different market trends. Um, but the most important part of this idea is it's sexy enough to convince my roommates to join, to join me, right? Because, <laughs> because without this idea, even though there's a lot of problems with it, for example, later we found out it's very hard to monetize this idea. Uh, we couldn't get any VC funding, uh, you know, the, our investors are the dumbest investor in the world, which are our parents, right? So, so there's a problems with this idea, but the best part of this idea is it allows me to actually convince my roommates uh, to join the company. Okay, and these are guys that, cause you, you went to Stanford, right? So there's also that, you know, on top of the whole tech story, do you have another check mark in there? Were these guys that you knew there, how did they come into play? Yeah, so one of my room, uh, one of our co-founders, actually, uh, my roommates throughout the undergrad and also, uh, uh, yeah, throughout the four years, actually. And actually, there's a little funny story about that. Uh, at Stanford, when we uh, first joined, you had to fill out this survey and you had to talk about uh, when do you go to sleep, what do you like to do, and they will pair up someone that's complete opposite of you. And that person is actually <laughs> my, my co-founder. So talking about, oh. you know, learning how to uh, live with, literally live with someone who has completely different perspectives. So one of the co-founders is my roommate for four years. The other one uh, is actually my roommate for my master's uh, program. And the other one uh, lived in the same dorm with us. And the reason why they are all my roommates or dorm mates is actually very simple. Um, I don't have any competitive advantage against like Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg, right? They can get much better salaries out there, right? <laughs> we basically pay them nothing. So the competitive advantage I have is basically saying, 
hey, if you don't, if you don't join me, like what kind of roommate are you? What kind of friend are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's basically we'll it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll play. Okay, but I mean, the idea, especially in those times, I'm sure seeing so many social medias coming up, it just kind of makes sense. Okay, how, you know, you don't want to miss out on something and it's something being so competitive. Okay, so that, I get that. And then, so it's 2006, the idea comes into play. How about the name? Like Spokio is like, it sounds cool, right? It sounds trendy, like good, good tech name, but where does that come from? Yeah, the reason is very simple. The number one reason is because it's free, right? So at that time, any kind of English word already costs like tens of thousand dollars, right? If it's a, it's a correct spelling English word, it's already cost like that. And then if you want to do misspellings, it's still a couple thousand dollars. And Spokio really, first and foremost, is free. And we want to do something about social relationships, people relationships. So the root word that we pick is hub and spoke, right? Which is about, which is a visualization or relationship. So that's the root word. And then the, at that time, if you append A or O, both of them are available. And we pick O, Spokio instead of Spokia, because it, it's a circle. You kind of round it up the relationship into a circle. So that's the reason. But first and foremost, it's a free domain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, well done. I mean, look, same with us. We're looking, everyone wanted the same thing, something that, it, that, that makes sense, that is not too long. But then you run into that, and especially you think the more time goes, you have to get so creative to find something that is not going to cost you $20,000, right? That somebody hasn't thought of that yet. So that's super real. 